Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be going in depth into my week number 13 waiver wire ads for the 2022 fantasy football season. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton if you want to follow me on Twitter. The graphics going to fly onto your screen right Right now, please do so at Notorious FNTSY. We're going to be talking about our sponsor of today's video, BetMGM, a little bit later. So without further ado, let's get into my week number 13, top 10 waiver wire ads. We begin with my number one waiver wire pickup of the week, Traylon Burks, wide receiver of the Tennessee Titans, going up against the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia, currently owned at 51% of leagues on Yahoo Fantasy. So if you play on NFL, CBS, ESPN, any of those other fantasy football platforms, then the ownership percentage might be slightly different depending on the site. Though I will note in some cases, there might be a drastic, a wide difference in ownership percentage depending on which site you play on. In week number 12, up against the Cincinnati Bengals at home in Tennessee. Burks was the wide receiver number 15 in half PPR. Now, these stats don't take into account the fact that there's a game tonight on Monday Night Football, so it's not entirely correct that he's the wide receiver 15, but going into Monday Night Football, he is the wide receiver 15, having four receptions on six targets for 70 yards, picked up Derrick Henry's fumble and scored a touchdown off of that. Now, obviously, did anyone expect him to score a touchdown on that play? Of course not, but I'm not here to apologize for a touchdown that Burks got for your fantasy team. If you already have him, he has had back-to-back -back Michael Jordan 96-97 solid performances week 11 at the Green Bay Packers in prime time, seven receptions on eight targets for 111 yards. He has had a 22% target share in the Tennessee Titans offense over the last two games. I am fully confident in saying that Trey Lott Burks is the number one wide receiver in this offense, and I'm fully confident in saying that even up against a tough Philadelphia Eagles defense in Philadelphia, I still think Trey Lott Burks can get it done and will be a start-worthy wide receiver going forward. At number two, we have Zonovan Knight, running back of the New York Jumbo Jets, going up against the mini Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota this week, currently owned in 1% of leagues on Yahoo Fantasy. Now, in week number 12, going up against the Chicago Bears, this man came from out of nowhere like an RKO from Randy Orton, running back number 22 in half PPR, 14 rushes for, you guessed it, 69 yards. Very nice. I like three receptions on three targets for 34 yards and a fumble in terms of snap counts. For the Jets running backs, Zonovan Knight led the team with 48%, Michael Carter 30%, uh, 30 and Ty Johnson 24%. Now, Carter's availability for next week's game is unknown. Same thing goes with James Robinson. But my thought process on this is that while maybe James Robinson and Michael Carter are both active next week up against the Minnesota Vikings defense, it is entirely possible that the team and Salah end up going with the hot hand. And Zonovan Knight looked incredible in that game. Now, I know, Nick, the Bears defense is complete and utter dog shit. I understand, right? I'm not here saying that Zonovan Knight is the second coming of Barry Sanders or some crazy shit like that. But what I will tell you is that if you need a running back, you want to take a running back flyer, a deep shot from three Stephen Curry style, then you might as well try and take that shot on Zonovan Knight because if he does become the guy, then he could be incredibly valuable, especially if they keep going with Magic Mike White as the quarterback. Also important to note that by tomorrow, Tuesday, before waivers run through, we might have a much better idea on what the running back situation looks like in New York with the Jets. Next up, we move to number three, Jamison Williams, wide receiver of the Detroit Lions, going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars at home in Detroit, 39% owned on Yahoo. Now, I've been someone who has been banging the drum aggressively for Jamison Williams. It seemed like his comeback was imminent over the last couple of weeks, and now, based upon what I've read from Ian Rappaport last week, it appears that there is a good chance that Jameson, William, Jameson Williams plays this week up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
I definitely would not want to just instantly jam him balls deep into my lineup and expect some greatness. Now, obviously, the matchup up against the Jacksonville Jaguars is relatively solid, but they might want to just slowly ease him into the offense. They might not want him to go out there and play a crazy amount of snaps and just be the number two or the one B behind Amon Ross St. Brown, right? They might want to just, you know, kind of just the tip approach, just go very slowly. And then eventually next week and uh, week 14, then we see Jamison Williams getting a lot of snaps. I truly believe in the upside of this guy. There's a reason why he was drafted so highly in the 2022 NFL draft. The guy's an incredible speedster. This Lions offense at points has looked really fucking good this season. So I think Jamison Williams is a wide receiver that you need to own. But I will note, it is important to understand that if you need a wide receiver that you have to play this week, like say your wide receivers are on bye, there's two teams on bye this week. If one of those guys you need uh, to play is on bye, then I probably would not pick up Jamison Williams because again, I'm not 100% locked and loaded in saying that he's playing and it also could be a chance where they just ease him in instead of letting him go. Balls to the wall. At number four, we have Gus Bus Edwards running back of the Baltimore Ravens going up against the Denver Broncos at home in Baltimore. Broncos country. Let's ride. 56% owned on Yahoo. Week 12 up against the Jacksonville Jaguars in Jacksonville. Running back 28 and half PPR. 16 rushes for 52 yards and a tug. One target. Now, Gus Edwards basically made Kenyon Drake irrelevant in last week's game. The issue with Gus Edwards is the fact that Kenyon Drake is still there. Lamar Jackson is still there to vulture points it is a situation that is incredibly hard to go to game in and game out because you understand and you have to understand when you play him that there's a chance that this guy goes out there and puts up an absolute dud that completely sinks the metaphorical ship of your fantasy football team. But he also has incredible upside when the Baltimore Ravens are clicking at maximum capacity. The Ravens Ravens could put up 32, 40 points in any matchup. Now, this week, they get the Broncos, and the Broncos defense has looked a little bit softer as of recently. Early on in the season, it was hilarious because Russell Wilson was playing like an absolute fucking buffoon out there. The Broncos defense was literally standing on his head playing amazing, and they were still losing the games, but the Broncos defense hasn't been as good recently, but they're still one of the better defenses in the NFL. I don't love this spot for Gus Edwards, but again, if you need a running back, you want a high upside running back. Gus Edwards could be that guy. At number five, we have Darius Slayton, wide receiver of the New York Football Giants, going up against the Washington Commanders this week at home in MetLife. 55% owned on Yahoo. But before we break down Darius Slayton and the rest of the other five waiver wire ads for the week, I would like to give you guys a quick word for our friends and our sponsor over at BetMGM. They've been on your screen this whole entire time. If you're a brand new user to BetMGM and bet $10 on any pregame money line world cup game you'll receive $200 in free bets if anyone scores a goal in the world cup which is guaranteed to happen so I'm going to show you right now on the screen what to do you're going to sign up then you're going to navigate to the top of the screen by clicking the link in the video description again to sign up you're going to scroll to the top of the screen it says soccer with a little soccer ball next to it you're going to click on that then you can bet on any game I'm going to choose just the highest favorite for all intents and purposes of today's video bet $10 on that and you receive $200 in free bets that bet could lose it could be a draw in that game. And as long as someone scores again in the World Cup, there is guaranteed to happen. It's guaranteed to happen. You will get $200 in free bets that you can bet on any sport. So please make sure you take advantage of it right now before it's too late. It will be expiring on December 4th. So only a couple more days of this offer makes you take advantage of it before it disappears back on into Darius Slayton. Last week, he had a down game up against the Cowboys in Jerry's world on Thanksgiving. Wide receiver, 47 and half PPR, three receptions on six targets for uh, 63 yards, has now been solid over the last five games. There are so many injuries to the wide receiver room with Darius Slayton around him that he is just guaranteed to get targets. He's playing with guys that are fucking janitors. He's playing with local McDonald's employees. It is hilarious, the wide receivers that the Giants are rolling out. So Darius Slayton has big upside because of the limited amount of weapons around him. Again, I don't think Darius Slayton's the best fucking wide receiver on earth. 
but the situation is really good for him. At number six, we have Kyron Williams, running back of the LA Rams, going up against the Seattle Seahawks this week in LA, 36% owned. Last week, up against the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City, running back 34, 11 carries for 35 yards, three receptions on three targets for 25 yards, and he outsnapped Cam Akers 18 to 6. Now, the Seattle Seahawks defense is not necessarily the best against the run. We did obviously see Josh Jacobs of the Las Vegas Raiders run an absolute fucking train on that defense last week. Obviously, I don't think Kyron Williams is going to do the same. This Rams offense is a little bit bleak, but ultimately the running back pickings aren't the best at this point in the season. And if you want a high upside shot again, like a guy like Gus Edwards, a lot of upsides out of a night as well. If he ends up being the guy, same thing with Kyron Williams. So I do think that he's a guy you should look to pick up at number seven. We have Zay Jones, wide receiver of the Jacksonville Jaguars going up against the Detroit Lions in Detroit, 25% owned on Yahoo in week number 12 up against the Baltimore Ravens. Zay Jones was the wide receiver number five in half PPR, having 11 receptions on four targets for 145 yards while Zay Jones isn't the main target in this offense he has had four games with over 10 targets already this season and Trevor Lawrence looked downright fucking incredible a stud on Sunday up against the Baltimore Ravens and if Trevor Lawrence continues to play like that especially up against a bottom of the barrel, one of the worst defenses I've ever seen fucking assembled in the National Football League in the Detroit Lions, then maybe Zay Jones could have a repeat banger performance this week at number eight. We have Van Jefferson, wide receiver of the LA Rams, going up against the Seattle Seahawks, 23% owned on Yahoo. Week number 12, up against the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City. Wide receiver, 34 and half PPR, three receptions, odd seven targets for 29 yards and a score. And he's had two touchdowns in the last three games. Alan Lazard, not Alan Lazard, Alan Robinson is done for the year, likely as is Cup. I know I don't think Stafford's coming back either, so the situation at the quarterback position obviously isn't ideal, but when you can anytime pick up the number one wide receiver in an offense, you might as well take the fucking shot on it. You might as well take the shot and say, you know what, even if Bryce Perkins is absolute dick cheese He's still going to get targets. This is a matchup that's pretty decent against Seattle. Again, I'm not banging the drum aggressively for J Van Jefferson telling you that you got to start him this week. But what I'm telling you is that if you're down bad, you're in a deeper league, you can look towards Van Jefferson, especially this week up against Seattle. Now we move to number nine with Magic Mike White, quarterback of the New York Jumbo Jets at the mini soda Vikings, 4% owned on Yahoo. Now, this is under the assumption, and sometimes making an assumption makes an ass out of you and me, as uh, people say. Mike White's got to be the starting quarterback in this game, right? Zach Wilson, there is no way in fuck, no way in hell, that Zach Wilson is the starting quarterback this week. After how Mike White sliced up the Chicago Bears defense, just, just can't be Zach Wilson. Quarterback six against the Bears. 22 completions on 28 attempts for 315 yards. And not one, not two, but three touchdowns and three rushes for two yards. Zach Wilson, in his dreams, can't even put up those numbers up against a putrid Chicago Bears defense. The Minnesota Vikings, they've got a decent defense, but they're not the best against the pass. And with how strong Magic Mike White looked last week, I got to have some confidence that he might be able to put up yet another solid performance this week up against Minnesota. At number 10, to close out my waiver wire ads of the week, we have Hunter Henry, tight end of the New England Patriots, going up against the Buffalo Bills at home in New England. 30% owned on Yahoo. Week 12 up against the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota. Tight end three on the week and half PPR. Three receptions on five targets for 63 yards and a score. He also scored another touchdown that wasn't actually a touchdown. That ruling is one of the dumbest things in the National Football League. If I was a Patriots fan, I probably would have fucking broken my TV in half, but that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. The exact same thing happened against them with Jesse James a couple of years ago of the Pittsburgh Steelers, but it went the Patriots way. That time, this time, the exact opposite. At this point in the season, finding a tight end that is even remotely serviceable week in and week out in the waiver wire is basically 
impossible. You're sending out a prayer to the fantasy football gods above that the guy that you choose to be your tight end ends up playing decent that week. So again, while it's incredibly difficult, I think taking the shot on Henry is worth it if you're down bad at tight end. I'm not saying he's going to be consistent. I'm not even saying that I think this is a prolific matchup against the Bills, but ultimately, when there's not the best of the slim pickings on the waiver wire, there's a lot worse options than Hunter Henry. So thank you guys all so much for watching today's video. If you did end up enjoying, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well as hit that like button. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. We talked about our sponsor, BetMGM, earlier on in today's video. So if you haven't, uh, if you're a new user to BetMGM, make sure you click on the link in the video description to activate that offer. I love you guys all so much. I hope you all have a great rest of your guys' day. And as always, good boy!